CDNs, Content Distribution Networks. This is the part in video streaming services that Polly finds the most amusing. Um, some of you might know, many of the global services that are popular worldwide uses some sort of CDN in the back. So that includes Gmail, Dropbox, uh, even the Zoom teleconferencing system that is a bit controversial these days. The reason for that is this. Um, you hear a little bit back, Dash. Okay, so Dash there is nice. The client can actually adapt. Given this much network resource, we ask for uh, the video chunks and the version that's just behind, okay, just below the available bandwidth. Okay, so this adapts uh, to fluctuations on the internet, which includes uh, when the number of users is increases, yeah, the remaining available bandwidth will be lower and lower. But Dash there does is just to adapt to the change. The thing is that the change could become unbearable. So if the number of users increase continuously, okay, and if a high number of them are demanding a service simultaneously, you could end up with available bandwidth that is so low, it's not even sufficient to serve the chunk with the minimum rate. And to deal with the network capacity issue is what CDN here is mainly to address for. Again, there's a critical issue on popular systems on the internet today, the scalability issue. And CDN here magically addresses uh, some aspects of these uh, scalability issues. Let's step back a little bit and look at option one. So this is to contrast CDN. And this is the simple, naive solution. What about using just one server? Yeah. If you recall when we were discussing DNS system, the name IP address mapping service, uh, we were saying that originally there's only one server instead of having a what, distributed service, isn't it? Yeah, using one server, we have what issue like this, single point of failure. That server down, the entire service down. The mega server down, the video streaming service is also down. And that one server there is also the point of congestion because everyone is asking uh, for its service. And they'll be part of the world being happy because they are close to the server. But they'll be, uh, the rest of the world will be ha unhappy because they are farther away from the server. And um, delay long is not good. And there's also a fairness issue, isn't it? How come you always get to enjoy short delay service? And how come okay, I always have to wait? And last, this one is more distinctive in video streaming service. In um, DNS, the name to IP mapping are all short messages. But here, for video streaming, it's continuous. And each frame is already bigger than the name IP mapping. So we are sending these streams repeatedly. And some of the streams are probably the same. So, Users might be requesting popular videos, which means uh, we are sending multiple copies of the same video over and over again. Right? Now, not a very thrifty way of using the network resource. Solution like this, definitely not scale. This is very clear. And that takes us to option two, which is exactly what CDN is doing. That's, you know, instead of using just one physical machine storing one copy of these content, that's use multiple machines storing multiple copies of these content. And more importantly, okay, distribute them around the internet, making sure that they are very widespread geographically. Okay. And the point of doing this is so that, hey, if there's a server here, uh, the clients around it uh, will be able to communicate and get the content within the local area. Therefore, uh, the network capacity, uh, other than this part, can be opened up for other clients 
interacting with other servers. Okay, so the number of duplicate video transmission can be reduced. A more efficient way, a more thrifty way of utilizing the network resource. Now, let's talk about the two models the CDNs are architecting their uh, physical infrastructure. First one is called the Enterdeep. Okay, so this is actually speaking that the infrastructure, the machines themselves, okay, for storing these videos are actually deep, closer to the end customers, deep into the ISPs, to the local ISPs, uh, so that they are close to the end customers. Akamai, one of the oldest companies, is implementing exactly this architecture. Therefore, there are so many locations around okay, in Akamai. Uh, pretty much for each local ISP, Akamai probably set up a site where you see typically a rack of workstations and they are um, redundantly connected uh, to the other machines in the access network, other routers in the access network, and potentially very close to the users. So Akamai there, uh, when they deal with the 9SP, they rent for the rack space. They rent sometimes for physical machines on the rack. They definitely subscribe uh, to the connectivities provided by the local, uh, local area access networks. Now, the other model is bring home model. Okay, so by bring home, uh, this CDN architecture is to say that the Physical infrastructure, the servers, okay, they're storing video contents are actually closer to the uh, service hall, uh, where the origin of the video sources are from. Essentially, the company generating the video. Right? So it's actually closer to the home company. Uh, therefore, they are actually higher up in the internet hierarchy, closer to the core instead of to the local access network. Okay, so they are actually very close to these pops, the internet exchange points. So the idea is that such a CDN company will build up a few racks of these uh, workstations and just connect to the pops where they get access to the rest of the internet. Right? Now, because the number of locations is very limited as the number of pops are also limited, so mm, there are not many of these sites and the sites tend to be bigger instead of calling them sites uh, they are called the clusters okay so the physical infrastructures will be formed by server clusters okay a few of these clusters are uh, interconnected through the pops the internet exchange points so they did not go deep into the access networks Limelight, uh, this is a cheaper CDN service, um, offers bring home CDNs. Now, so you see a little bit also advantages and disadvantages of the two models. This closer to the end customer, some big wealthy service providers might subscribe to this because potentially uh, maintaining the infrastructure is very high cost. Now, those smaller service or smaller content providers, um, not quite as uh, wealthy, then might subscribe to a bring home CDN service. 